皆さんこんにちはこのパートでは科学技術系ライティング特有の重要ポイントについてマルコム先生が解説してくれます今回のトピックは標準的な英語を使うことアンドソーオンとエトセトラ括弧と略語の使い方ですワークブックをお持ちの方は29ページから41ページをご覧くださいそれではマルコム先生お願いします So welcome to part four of this OCW course on writing in scientific writing in English. And、uh, we're going to look at some specifics for scientific writing、uh, that are important、uh, for writers. Here are the specifics.、Uh, you should use standard English. Don't use expressions like and so on and etc. Use parentheses properly. And lastly, we're going to look at acronyms. So, what is standard English?、Uh, many people have different、uh, opinions on what standard English is, but the general、uh, consensus is that standard English is the English that is described in the Oxford English Dictionary. And、uh, an example of non standard English is in this example here wipe out. Is conversational or slang. Development will wipe out the entire population of tigers in India. There's a better way of saying this in standard English. You could use the word destroy or you use the word eliminate. And I've chosen the second of those. Development will eliminate the entire population of tigers in India. Okay, how do we identify non standard English? This is not so easy as it may seem.、Uh, you can use an electronic dictionary, and they are very useful, and of course,、uh, they're widespread these days. There are online dictionaries and websites where you can go to check whether the expression you're going to be using is in fact a standard English expression or non standard. And lastly, You could find a qualified native speaker of English like myself. That may not be easy for some of you, but、uh, if you can find one, you can check your English with that person. Here is a sentence that includes the expression junk food. This was in a real paper, references here, source. The population dynamics of some species may be affected. Negatively, by abundance of junk food in the oceans. Now, in this paper, they were talking about some uh, specific uh, types of mammals whales, dolphins, and porpoises. This is about the kind of food that that group of animals have access to and how it's been changing recently. So, can you think of a better way of saying junk food? Think about it for a moment before you move on. Okay, instead of junk food, we can write food with little nutritional value or low nutrition food. So, I inserted food with little nutritional value into this sentence. So, the population dynamics of some species may be affected. Negatively, by abundance of food with little nutritional value in the oceans. It's a better sentence and it doesn't include any slang words or informal words. You shouldn't use and so on or etc. If you are listing a number of examples or if you're listing a series of ingredients, It is important that you either stop the list at some point or that you add all of the components that you need. So, take for example this sentence We recognize that nutrient composition, for example, amino acids, vitamins, and so on, also contribute to prey quality. If you include and so on, then the reader doesn't know what they could be. So, it's important to identify them, or if you don't have any more examples, to stop the list. Let's see how it goes. One way of doing it, this is the first、uh, way of doing it, 
is to simply stop the list. We recognize that nutrient composition, for example, amino acids and vitamins, close the bracket, also contributes to prey quality. That's a, a fine sentence and you're not using and so on. Or you could identify what else could be in that list of nutrient composition. For example, amino acids, vitamins, proteins, carbohydrates and fats also contributes to prey quality. So there we are adding more to the list and in this case we've identified five different types of nutrients. Now when you are using EG it's probably not a good idea to uh, add too many to a list of examples. Uh, two or three is enough. Uh, you don't keep on listing them until you've got ten examples. Another ex expression that is not a good idea in scientific writing is etc. Don't uh, use etc. If you know what the etc. is, then include it. If you don't know what the etc. is, then don't include it and just have and. So the growth medium contained tryptone, yeast, etc. Well, what, what could the etc. be? Well, it might be several additional components. So instead of etc., one real possibility is the growth medium contained tryptone, yeast extract, and sodium chloride. That's it. That's the sentence, uh, not a, uh, an etc. Okay, so the third useful expression in science writing is the parenthesis. Parentheses are used for supplementary information, examples and citations. The uh, sentence here is a straightforward one and one that is very familiar to most people. It uses the parentheses here and here uh, to include extra information. It also includes uh, sentences, uh, the brackets, uh, parentheses here and there, here, to identify the citation. Who wrote the paper? So that's, uh, those are two uh, ways in which you can use parentheses. So let's, as an exercise, go through this and add parentheses to this sentence. It's a long sentence, so we can break the sentence up in two ways. One is we can identify what the EG is, what the example is. The other is we can identify who wrote the papers that are being referred to here. If you read it without parentheses, it is a bit uh, um, tedious. But if you break it up with parentheses, it's easier to read. Here, I've done it for you. The impacts of habitat fragmentation, e.g. species population decline, close bracket, have been identified extensively. And there are the people who've identified this phenomenon, habitat fragmentation. So if you bypass what's in the parentheses, you have a perfectly good sentence. The impacts of habitat fragmentation, let's skip this part, have been studied extensively. You see how extra information is in the parentheses there. So the impacts of habitat fragmentation have been studied extensively. That's, that's a good sentence. However, we really should let the world know who wrote the information that is the basis for that statement. This is uh, a, uh, another use of parentheses. Um, in this case, it's a very long sentence with a lot of information in parentheses. And it makes it difficult to read. You can see here, just scanning it, you don't have to read it. You can see it is a going to be difficult to read. But we notice that in the middle, there is a but. but is, an, is a conjunction that could be removed and we could then take this big sentence and divide it into two sentences. If we do that and also remove parentheses, then we have two uh, shorter, intermediate sized sentences that can uh, be read easily and uh, 
clearly it's a, a, a solution. So just a couple of words here. In this sentence, the word cryptic comes in. Cryptic means difficult to see. And towards the end here, proxies are substitutes, substitutes for something. Again, this is about uh, the, the, the same uh, whales, dolphins, and porpoises that I was telling you about before. And if we apply the rule of removing the but in the middle, but put include they to make it a complete sentence, then we have two sentences with no parentheses, which are easier to read. The ecology and physiology of some animals, the whales, etc., are difficult to study either because they are too large to be handled or are cryptic, protected, or even extinct. End of first sentence. They, the animals, they can likely be studied by quantifying the quality of their diets in terms of energy content and deriving proxies or substitutes for their cost of living in terms of muscle performance. So they, uh, they quantified that in this paper. They, they gave some very nice data about those two aspects, the diets and the, the muscle performance. So the last part of this, uh, again, related to science writing, uh, some special usages, is acronyms. Acronyms are abbreviations for the words, uh, the initial words of a string of words. So well-known examples are deoxyribonucleic acid, uh, abbreviated as DNA. And at one time, we used to have periods between the D and the N and the A. Now it's condensed into just three letters like that. Geographic information system. Very familiar to people. GIS is a useful acronym and one that's widely seen these days. So how do we use acronyms? Acronyms you define at the first usage. So if you are creating an acronym, you could just simply take the first letters of uh, the, uh, the string of words, such as scientific English writing, S-E-W, and there you have an acronym. Uh, here is, a, a, once, once you have uh, produced the acronym, then you can use it again later in the work and you don't have to keep defining it. So there was increased interest in induced pluripotent STEM, there's the, the basis for the acronym, IPS, cells, after Professor Yamanaka received the Nobel Prize. However, his IPS cell research began many years before. You define the acronym first time and then use it subsequently in the paper. So for more examples of the specifics of scientific writing, please see section three of the workbook. And uh, thank you for your attention. いかがでしたか。皆さんも標準的な英語を使うことと、エトセトラなどを使わないことや、括弧の使い方に気をつけて、より良い文章が書けるように練習しましょう。次のパート5では、実際の科学論文の書き方についてマルコム先生が解説してくれます。パート5でまたお会いしましょう。See you in the next part.